Tacos weren't invented in Texas, but you could make the argument that Texas simply perfected them. By blending the traditions of Mexico and Latin America with the creativity and boldness of the Southwest, the tacos across Texas shine as bright as the Lone Star itself. And whether you're hungry for a classic crispy beef, a fresh fish taco on the coast, or something entirely different, well, this is your trip. It's a Texas tacos road trip. Soft, crispy, corn, flour, fajita, tripa. Texas tacos are as diverse as the people who live here. Some cooks cling to taco tradition like religion, while others live on the fringes of what even qualifies as a taco. So throw on your guayabera, hola amigos, and loosen your belt as we look back on some of the best tacos of the road. But we gotta kick this off with what many call the most important taco of the day, the breakfast taco. And while you can find magnificent breakfast tacos all over, well, there's one that I dream about on the South Texas coast. Perhaps the only thing bigger than Manuel's hospitality are his homemade tortillas. Blanket-sized creations that he fills to the point of overflowing with anything and everything. One reason, he calls them the contoro, Spanish for with everything. Start off with a gentleman, a lunch con toro. Uh, people start, uh, hey, can you add this to my bacon and egg taco? Can you add this and that? Sure. sure. We can do whatever you want. <laughs> on the tortilla, you end up with, what, about six eggs on it or something? Something like that. Well, I'm a man who tries to appreciate everything in life, so why not start this day with my own con toro? <laughs> All right, here it is, one taco. And just to show you how big the tortilla is, I got an extra. <laughs> Look at this. What do you do, man? Do you go into the middle? Like, it start folding it in. But at that point, it's no longer a taco. It's a burrito, right? You start curling. Oh, curling yeah, from here? Uh, yeah. No, we're going to fold it like, like that, like a more traditional burrito. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it a lot. But with a taco like this, it's like a Thanksgiving feast. You just go take a nap and watch some football. <laughs> All right, guys, I got a question for y'all. You can only eat one type of taco for the rest of your life. Do you pick a breakfast taco or a lunch dinner taco? Which one do you go with? I would eat a breakfast taco any time of day. That's true. Breakfast tacos are not just for breakfast. There's lunch and dinner. There's two of those. There's one breakfast. So I guess I'd go with the savory. It doesn't mean you get double the I amount of tacos. Know it. I'm going to pick the lunch dinner tacos. OK. Can All you, right. Can you put brisket and egg in a taco? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll allow it. Then I'll, I'll go it. breakfast. Though. I think I'm going with the lunch dinner taco just for the sake of the variation. The thing that throws tacos over the edge, next level, always, the homemade tortilla. tortilla. Homemade tortilla. Always. The tortilla is the secret. Some would say the tortilla is just a shipping vessel to get the filling to your mouth. Oh, but they'd be wrong. Maybe it's because they've never had a proper tortilla. Like the kind made a la mano over a searing comal. Our tortillas are always fresh. When I say always, I mean always. So it's so almost. your tortilla, any day you want to, is going to be no more than 10 minutes off the griddle. Because I see them back there doing that right now. Exactly. That's going to be not tortilla sola. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. Because, yeah, it just yeah. came off the griddle 30 and, seconds ago. Yeah. <laughs> is it good? Oh, yeah. Let me make it a little bit better. They go a little bit on that bite right there. Homemade salsa? Homemade. Everything's homemade. In oh. the premises, fresh, every day. We've struck taco gold, my friends. All tacos break down into three things. The filling, the salsa, and the tortilla. What taco journalists Mondo Rayo and Jared Nice call the holy trinity. And one of the hardest questions every Texan must answer, flour or corn? 
Where do you guys fall in the, the flour versus corn? It depends on what you're getting, but... Uh, I'm gonna have to agree with Daniel on but that. But I, I default to flour. If it's a homemade but, tortilla, then flour. Yes. If I'm doing store-bought, then it's probably corn. The corn, you've got to warm up before you make the taco. Oh, like, yeah. you know, there's nothing worse than a, like a room temp or even cold corn tortilla that you're trying to make a taco out of. Man. It just kind of breaks. That's, that's awful. This is, this is a uh, breakfast taco no-no. Do not use a corn tortilla on a breakfast taco. I'm gonna have second You have that. to have a flour tortilla. I think it really does depend on the taco, what's on it. Good corn tortilla on a street taco. Nice. Oh, yes. Yes. If you wanna get technical, corn is the OG tortilla. And if you want the authentic flavor of real Mexican tacos, then look no further than street tacos, or those sold at small taquerias all over the state. And the closer you can get to Mexico, the better. Just brush up on your Spanish. Tripas, molleja, pastor. Typical non-Spanish speaking dumb questions. Que es ternera? Ternera, it's like shredded meat. Shredded meat? Yes. Okay. And melanesa? A steak. Like it's like steak. a steak. Okay. You chop it. That sounds delicious. This one right here is melanesa taco. And not too long ago, it was listed as one of Texas Monthly's tacos that you have to eat before you die. Let me see if I agree. Oh, they were very ripe. There's a reason this place has been in Laredo for like 40 years now. These are some of the most amazing ones I've had. To us, they're like Valley tacos. They're like Brownsville tacos because we're so close to the border, so it's like that Matamoros, Mexico, Brownsville kind of taco. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the taco menu is simple. Beef steak or steak, pastor pork, barbacoa, molejas, otherwise known as sweetbreads, and tripas, otherwise known as intestines, all cooked fresh. And the team back here, they are taco making machines. All right, here it is. Look at these little tiny tacos, man. They're awesome. All right, here we go, three plus. I mean, that is some savory meat. You know, they actually asked me, do I prefer my tripas uh, chewy, crunchy, or somewhere in the middle? I have no idea how I prefer my tripas. So I ordered somewhere in the middle. That's awesome. You know what that needs, though? A little bit of punch. What do you think? What do you think is the spiciest? I'm gonna go with this is the spiciest. You think? Yeah. It's probably the spiciest. <laughs> what do you got on that one? Oh, no, that's just pureed habaneros. Daniel, do you try it? Find out. Here. Is that like ketchup? <laughs> <laughs> He's a punk. Truthfully, I could order an entire plate of any of these and just crush it. I can be here all day. The salsa that goes on the taco can almost be as important as the meat that's on the taco. I would agree. It's gonna make it or break it. Man, you'll uh, you'll light yourself up. You just assume that that little squeeze bottle on the table at the Mexican restaurant is mild or something. Oh no, I've been burned in <laughs> every kind of way. <laughs> Both when I ate it and the next day too. Ooh, oh yeah. yeah. All right, guys, so we have arrived at the city that most people would consider taco mecca, San Antonio, Texas. But there's a single particular kind of taco that was invented in San Antonio that we're here to eat. And I'm talking about puffy tacos. Mm -hmm. You ever had a puffy taco? Oh, I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't had one in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, well then, some would say you haven't yet had a puffy taco. To visit the cradle of puffy taco dome, we're heading to San Antonio's west side a funky land of Latino art, history, and food. And our destination, Ray's Drive-In, is all of those things. This throwback taco dive was started in 1956 by Ray Lopez. It's now owned by the family of Ray's younger brother, Arturo. And after 60 years of service, it remains a staple of San Antonio culture. So I think I'm gonna take a cue from all of these guys. You know I mean? They seem to be taking life at the right speed. <sighs> While the action today is all outside, inside the small dining room, you'll find a bizarre mix of old paintings, altars, and oddities. And in the kitchen, the reason Ray's is famous, puffy tacos. The Lopez family legend claims that at some point, Decades ago, their great-grandmother was flattening and frying corn masa for tostadas. Well, she got distracted and a kitchen stick, no doubt guided by the very hand of God, fell into the fryer, bending the tostada into taco form. 
And what emerged from the oil was a new creation that would change taco history. A unique shell made of puffed masa dough and stuffed with any number of classic fillings, making for a classic San Antonio experience. Oh yeah, hey, thank you very much. Woo-hoo-hoo. Oh, nice. This is a lot of puffiness going on right here. Three Ray's Classic Puffy Tacos. I got one with chicken, one with beef picadillo, and then one with carne guisada. You, you pick it up, you instantly know like this is not a normal taco. You've got this sort of like, well, how would I describe that? Oh, puffiness to it, you know? Mm. Oh yeah. It's like the, the filling is wrapped in a crispy blanket from heaven. It's, it's weird, it's like the outside crunches, but the inside feels like a soft corn tortilla. Probably wasn't very good foresight to wear a crisp white shirt to taco day. No, no, nope. no, nope. it's not. This may be the perfect taco for people who can't decide if they want crispy or soft. It's like the best of both worlds colliding. Can you hear that crunch? Oh, I can hear it. Can you hear it from way over there? Yeah, let's, let's appreciate that together. Yeah. All right, guys. So I gotta save a little bit of room because the Puffy Taco Tour of San Antonio continues right up the road at a different spot. Same family, but are they the same Puffy Tacos? There's only one way to find out. We gotta go eat them. While we travel across town, I must mention there are other tacos in Texas that take a non-traditional shape, including one that I would argue isn't even a taco. Oh, but those are fighting words in El Paso. And that spot, beloved by El Pasoans like no other, is the revered Chico's Tacos. Chico's originally opened in 1953 with this store on Alameda. Like much of El Paso, the Chico Taco is a thing of legend. They have a, like, that taste uh -huh. no other foods have. Oh, they're strange, you just have to have them. <laughs> it's just a big glob of cheese and taco and juice. I don't know, I don't know. It's just you, something. you can't describe it. It's just so good that you can't describe it's it. Okay, uh, that worked. Yeah. It's a thing of mystery and beauty. Ground beef rolled inside of a corn tortilla, deep fried, placed in a paper nacho boat, topped with the house's special tomato sauce, and then smothered with something I can only describe as good old fashioned government cheese. Order up. All right, here we go. Part taco, part flauta, part enchilada. Nothing fancy, but that's the point. The beef, the deep fried crispy crunch, the tomato sauce, the cheese. It just all sort of comes together for this magical Chico's Taco experience. Pig out food, late night food, all good Chico's Tacos food. I gotta be honest, when I first saw it, I was offended they would call it a taco. But turns out there's a traditional taco from Jalisco, Mexico called a taco tapatillo. And maybe that's what Chico meant. Corn tortillas rolled. Wait, rolled, yes sir. So why is that not a flauta? The same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. You hear that, folks? A flauta is also a taco, as long as it's a taco tapatillo. The dish gets topped with a little crema, or lots of crema, cabbage, and tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Shredded beef in the middle of a delicious, crunchy, rolled, fried corn tortilla. Oh, man, that's good. And this brings us to another dish that's not a taco, but definitely a close taco relative in Texas, the gordita. And if you think I'm talking about whatever that fast food chain calls a gordita, think again. So this is like a, a cornbread, almost, you right? Know, Mexican like cornbread? Oh, it's hollow like in the a, middle. Like a pita, right? Yeah, uh, you know, like a Mexican pita. Mexican pita. Or oh, some ranchero. But then we come to the stuffing, which can be any number of items. Brisket, chicken, oh, carne yeah. guisada, chicharrones, and mollejas, which are... It's a gland. A gland. Mm -hmm. Thymus gland. The, the thymus gland. You know, I was in the mood for cow thymus <laughs> glands this morning when I woke up. They have a, a crunchy and a chicharron flavor. Thymus gland. Oh, delicious. Some of my favorite things, fat and salt. I love it. <laughs> You'll live to be a thousand years old. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fountain of youth. All right, so here we go. Some deep fried thymus. That's awesome. Hispanic culture dictates that you don't waste any edible part of any animal. Because, well, everything's good on a taco. 
Now, if you want to stick to the safer side of tacos, well, you can't beat Texas fajita tacos with a stick, especially not at classic joints like Joe T. Garcia's in Fort Worth. That is really good. Or the fish tacos down on the Texas coast at markets like Los Tortugos. Mm, that's incredible. I love making episodes on the coast. But let's head back to San Antonio to continue our puffy tour of the Alamo City at our next stop, Henry's Puffy Tacos. Ray was one of five brothers. His younger brother, Henry, followed in his older brother's footsteps, carrying on the family legacy. This is Henry's daughter, Imelda. Ray opened up his restaurant. Henry, at a young, at a young age, worked with him as a dishwasher in the dish pit and then worked into the kitchen. He just kind of looked over what was going he made on. his brother started so <laughs> the dish pit. Oh, man, that's good. That's a good big brother, actually. Yeah. He learned it all and uh, very creative and had big dreams at a very young age. Henry eventually opened his own restaurant, El Taco Food To Go. He sold his family's famous tacos, but he didn't call them puffy tacos. In fact, at that time, nobody did. They made these puffy tacos, but back then it was called crispy tacos. It came in an epiphany. With a lack of words to describe his taco's famous texture, Henry came up with a single word, puffy. Even now, it's hard to describe. It's a puffy, light, crispy, cloudiness of perfection. You know, I don't, <laughs> a cloudiness of perfection. Yeah. yeah. That corn dough puffs up when it's in that fryer until it looks, you know, like it's kissing you. It's like <laughs> ready to be. <laughs> ready to be. Oh, oh, come on now. Give me sugar. Give me sugar. I will, puppy taco. No. Enjoy. Oh, so good. Mm. Do you think nowadays this is the same taco they're serving at Ray's, or have you, has Henry's kind of taken a little bit different approach to it? You know, well, there's a, a debate over this, uh, you know, who makes the best puffy taco. Sure, of course, yeah. But, you know, uh, they get praised and we get praised, and it's all just the family. We know that we put a lot of love into it. Yeah. So if customers go to Ray's and we're happy, they come here, there's just the San Antonio's know if you're going to get the real deal, either go to Ray's or Henry's. It's a, it's a very delicious family legacy to have. Yeah, I don't have anything nearly so. this delicious in my family. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of next level thinking, Henry also started the world's first puffy taco mascot, a staple of San Antonio Missions baseball games. But now let's step into the kitchen with Henry's son, Rick, to see how they get that signature puff. Our famous puffy tacos that our family has been doing for over 50 years. We probably sell between 800 and 1500 a day. What, 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 are you kidding me? The first step is to take that hand-pressed dough and drop it in the grease, where magic happens to the masa. They, they popped up to the top. They're puffing up, huh? They're puffing up, and now I've got to shape them. So I have some special tools that I use. OK. And this is where you have to cut the camera, for my eyes only. Highly proprietary. There you go. He's not joking. It was a condition they set before allowing us to film in the kitchen. CIA doesn't even know about this tool. <laughs> if I could describe this tool for you, it's something between a UFO and an underwater submarine. I mean, this had to have been recovered from Roswell. Very high tech. Given to you in a dream. Yeah, yeah. clearly. Yeah. <laughs> a couple seconds with the spaceship and then. All right, so these are done. This, this is what you're going for. You're going for that perfectly shaped puffy taco. Not everybody's shell is this pretty. <laughs> and next comes the filling. Anything from picadillo beef to chicken fajita. Is there anything that's not good inside of a puffy taco shell? No, you could even, we even put fish, fried fish or grilled fish. Ooh. Grilled shrimp in a puppy taco. You can put an enchilada in there if you want. <laughs> hey, you know? That's yeah. next level. Yeah, that's, that's next level. thinking right there. So we're going to start out with some chicken. All right, sounds the good. The shredded chicken here, lettuce, tomato. If you want cheese, you can cheese, top oh it yeah, off with without cheese. without a doubt. Shit. Oh, that is a thing of beauty. That's your puppy taco. And not only is it special because it's a Henry's puppy taco, it's special because I made it. Ah, <laughs> cheers to that. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. Woo! That's delicious, though. Oh, that's good. Oh. There's just something about a hot puffy from the grease. But that talk of an enchilada on a taco has me thinking. We've eaten some pretty crazy things on a taco before. One joint that has become the leader of crazy taco concoctions that we visited back when they were just a trailer in South Austin. Yeah, you got some crazy stuff on the menu. Yeah. Are these all your concoctions? Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, we started off with three tacos, and uh, we just had a chicken, a beef, and a barbacoa taco, and it gave us a chance to kind of fool around with stuff, yeah. try different ingredients, and whatever sold well, we put it on the menu. <laughs> Dorchies tacos, I got two. 
First one, fried avocado. Look at that. Over here, the trailer park taco. Make it trashy. Takes the lettuce out and puts queso on. It's got a fried chicken strip, pico de gallo, green chilies, trailer park food. Here I come. That is delicious. These may be the devil's tacos, but I feel like I'm in heaven. The world is realizing there's almost nothing you can't put on a taco. It's a mixture of American food and street food from around the world in mostly tropical areas. Okay. I, a lot of Asian influence here. And then also, I'm from Texas, so yeah. we do a lot of tacos as well. This looks amazing. This is the crazy taco. Shrimp, that's appropriate. Yep. Pork. Man. And then there's some homemade pineapple jam under, underneath there with some fresh avocado, red peppers, and tortilla strips on a homemade flour tortilla. Our tortillas are a lot different here. They're more more like a pastry, and it makes it harder to eat. They fall apart, but I think it's more enjoyable than a, you know a, something that's built just for structure. Sure. You're so right. It's almost like a warm, breaded pastry wrapping layers and layers of deliciousness. I like cooking things that I've never cooked before. I'll change the menu. I'll, do, I'll come up with a menu item, and I never try it until the first person orders. Well, you trust your instincts a lot. Well, man. You, you have to. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Ahi tuna and gorgonzola, I've never had those two things together, and then throw some grapefruit on top? for well, the Marissa. Holy moly. I just did it for shock value. Huh. Complete shock value. It's, it's our number one seller now. <laughs> I've eaten a lot of tacos, and I've never in my life tasted a taco like this. Seaweed salad and ahi tuna with grapefruit, so you're getting this real interesting, like, citrus um, sourness. The gorgonzola cheese brings that punch of, like, the blue cheese in there. I thought I had tasted every taco that was available to the human palate. This taco has just proved me wrong. What if you take a taco and mix it with a Texas classic? Well, the Youngs have a way of mixing Texan and Mexican tradition into one serious lunch, the brisket burrito. You can get your choice of like red sauce, green sauce, cheese, pico de gallo, barbecue sauce on your burrito. Mm -mm. Here we go. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh man, yeah, spot on. This is a uh, little uh, Tex-Mex mashup for barbecue. And instead of white bread, it's tortillas. Oh, and instead of pickles, it's pico de gallo. And instead of barbecue sauce, it's verde salsa. Changing things up a little bit, but I got no problem with that. We're finally on to our last taco stop, to a place where Texas blends, not with Mexico, but Oklahoma, to prove that you can find the most delicious, legendary tacos in the most unexpected places and in the most unexpected colors. We've been here 72 years. That's incredible. This is family owned and operated. This is the same family, and we're on our fifth generation. Fifth? <laughs> it's old school Tex-Mex at its finest, which ironically was started by Vicky's Greek father-in-law, who returned from World War II looking for a way to make money and stand out from the crowd. And so he made his tacos red, bright red. You don't see red tacos very much, if or, any. Or at all. At, yeah. at all. <laughs> We've had people try to duplicate them, but they can't do the taste. And it isn't just red dye, but a special kind of ground chili powder that gives the tacos their signature color. The homemade dough is pressed, filled with ground meat, and then deep fried. Oh, all right, so here we go. You can tell it's got the actual authentic cornmeal in it. Oh, dude, that's a good taco. The meat, the melted cheese in there, the lettuce. I mean, you close your eyes, you forget that it's red, but it's just an amazing taco. But if I close my eyes, I imagine a red Mexican sunset over the Chihuahua Desert. I blame, um, I blame you for this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the magic a taco can bring to your life. Call it a taco, burrito, or taquito. Make it soft, crispy, or even puffy. Fill it with beef, chicken, heck, tuna. Whatever you do, put that taco in front of me, because I want to eat it. You know, tacos epitomize Texas. We're a diverse group of folks rolled up together. And man, are we tasty. So I guess Taco Tuesday's a thing. But in Texas, we don't need a single day for tacos. Oh, no. We need a 1,000 days. And better yet, a 1,000 day trips. So I will see all of y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. Oh. I was gonna eat this. Is that weird? Y'all aren't related, are you? Oh, phew, good. Oh, 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 oh. oh you're wasting the taco! <laughs>